whispers. You would be amazed at how many of them get up and begin to act out what Mouse does. Oh, they read. That? So this is, I'm going to read this uh, at story time in the mm -hmm. Dunkirk Library on uh, January 28th. Well, that's great. I hope you contact the Westfield Library. They, I they have will. a very active program over there. I will and, do that. Uh, tell them you, you've got this, uh, tell them I recommended you. Okay, uh, that'll go a long way. Right, you're, you're a non-stop talker too. You can just keep right on going. I, ca I can. <laughs> I can just rattle on forever. Yeah, yeah it reminds me of uh, <laughs> some of my other guests who you can't slow down. I, I used to have to fight <laughs> with our state senator, not Kathy Young, but the one who preceded her, for the microphone. She said, look, this is my program, Reed. And <laughs> she'd go oh. right on roaring along. <laughs> what well, a gal. <laughs> you know, can, can I just, I'll take two minutes. Okay. I just want to tell you how, one of the things. No, you already that, had two minutes. Well, I want two more. Okay. One of the things that, I, that, that I'm working with JCC, with Jamestown Community College on, with Candace Huber, is I want, we want to bridge the gap between generations. And we want our children to hear us read and to listen to us read and to become engaged in writing. So one of the things that we're going to do uh, starting in February, we're going to do a six week uh, course, is take a trip down memory lane. Okay. Where Good. the grandparent or the parent can enroll in this with the children uh, and the grandparent or parent can convey this story to the child and the child will then be able to write the story in their own words. And if you think for one minute and you, you can do this. You need to call and register. What's a um, Wicca? I beg your pardon? What is a Wicca? Yeah. I'll bet you don't know. I bet you I don't. Well, let me tell you. I've got a phone call, though. What do you want to do? Tell me or t t tell the caller, all right? All right, I'll go to the caller. Call. Uh, you can find out what a Wicca is. Good morning, th caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning. I'm enjoying your show this morning. Uh, I have a question for your guest. Okay. Would you tell me, there's probably other folks like you out there that have a penchant for writing, but how, how would they get started writing for children and, and doing things like you do? Well, one of the things, that's an inter interesting question. I had an email, someone sent me an email uh, some time back about that. One of the things you have to do, I believe, and, and I'm not an expert, let me tell you, but one of the things that I think you do is that you have to write. You just have to start writing, and you have to put yourself in the mind of a child. I taught a creative writing class at JCC last uh, semester before last on creative writing. And one of the things that they were interested in was all about writing for children. You have to think about, if I'm going to write for a group of 10-year-olds, what would a 10-year-old do? And you think that way, and you begin to write the story that way. If you're going to write for a group of 4-year-olds or 5-year-olds, what would they do? What would be fun for them? And you start writing in that direction. So uh, the big thing is to start writing. Take a class. Take a class in creative writing, uh, call Candace Huber, Huber at JCC in Jamestown or Jackie Patterson at uh, JCC in Dunkirk, uh, the Olean campus, I can't remember his name, but you can call and say, is there a creative writing class? How do I start writing for children? Uh, and I'm sure that they will, they will have uh, someone there who can facilitate the class or who can teach the class um, and, and take my class at, uh, at uh, JCC and started in February, but that's how you get started. It's very difficult to get uh, books published right now uh, for children. It's one of the battles that you have. You do some self-publishing, you do some hybrid publishing, you work with agents, you just have to get it out there. So it's not easy to break in. It is But not once you easy. got a first few under your belt, it's easier. It's easier once you get something that you can show people and you can get them under your belt, absolutely. Okay, great. We're, we're speaking with uh, Vicki Westling. She is a writer, obviously, of children's books and quite concerned and interested in children and the relationship between children and uh, adults because that is a very important factor in raising a child is you've got to have the proper perspective in terms of moral structure, if nothing else. And you have to say the pledge, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which they don't do in, anymore in a lot of schools. Interestingly enough, how times change. Um, they do know how to run a computer perfectly, though, and they can play games all day long, which is unfortunately becoming, a, well, back when I was a kid, uh, there were no computers. You read. That's one of the Absolutely. Reasons. Today, who reads? Right. Kids can barely read, and they, some of them can barely write because the, the computer does computer does this for them. And as a matter of fact, they have computer programs that will read for you or write for you. You just talk yes. and they, they write it out. Right. Another, let's take another call. We got some callers okay. there. Okay. Good morning, caller. Thank you for waiting. Good morning, Reed. How are you? Good morning, madam. What's up? I was wondering who um, did the awful, or, sorry, I can't even think right now. Who did the drawings in the books? 
Yeah, this is a beautiful drawing. The, these books, the, the, for the Salmon Friends books, were all illustrated by Dan Drews. Um, Who's Dan Drews? Dan Drews is through the publisher. Oh. And so he's the one who did them. Now, for my sister's books, and, and she is just awesome for Mouse and all of her books, she is her own illustrator. And you can see, I mean, she is just unbelievable with her illustrations. I mean, she's really great with it. Um, as far as, as what she does, and she makes them look so real. She's written two other children's books as well. Uh, Macy Likes Ripe Persimmons. It's about her, uh, her, one of her dogs uh, eating persimmons. And then, of course, How Long is Pretty Soon that she wrote for her grandson. Uh, but she does all of her own illustrations. Uh, Annette Asbell. Oh, that's, that's, those are wonderful. You know, uh, the children's books of my day uh -huh. were... Uh, Especially uh, for kids in, who are 10, 11, there, were Thornton W. Burgess's books, mm -hmm. which were Mother West Wind series. Yes. Sammy the Squirrel, Blackie the Crow. Obviously, I read these. I loved them. I had every book he printed just about because my family kept giving them to me. And even today, my sister gives them to me. She finds them in garage sales. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and incidentally, the, the, the charm of it was the, the uh, little drawings, the graphics. Oh. Uh, Harrison was the one, or Harris, I believe. Yeah. Was the one who wrote the uh, who did the graphics. Of the, right. uh, and well, and Annette, my sister Annette does her own illustrations, and she uh -huh. is just awesome. That's what she should do. She should be doing. You had asked what a Wicca is. A yeah, Wicca. What is a Wicca? Well, one of the things that I do with my writing is that I want to do more than just entertain. While entertaining is important, I want them to learn. So a Wicca is what the Sioux Indians called a raccoon. Oh, really? Meaning little, ha little man that stands on, stands on his feet and eats with his hands. Yeah, well, they have a little mask on, too, and they, right. they, they steal from your garbage pail. Absolutely. So <laughs> children learn in this story, and this one has just been released. I mean, uh -huh. just been released. And it's the last one in this first series of, of seven. And children learn about a Wicca the Sioux Indians, and they learn about not playing with wild animals because they are, they do carry rabies. And in the Wicca's name is uh, Max. And he raccoons tells them are the highest percentage of rabies victims mm -hmm. when there is a uh, epidemic, which we have in Chautauqua County. Oh, absolutely. Uh, kills 90% of the coons. You know, one of the things that, that I've done with the children's books mm -hmm. and with the, by bringing them, uh, the animals alive, by talking about Sam mm -hmm. and, you know, and his friends, the Barkers, um, Children relate to that, and they and they don't feel like they're being preached to because they see these animals doing these things and getting into trouble. But with Max, he says, you know, raccoons have rabies. They eat from garbage cans. They can be dangerous. So children learn these things. It's well, a, let's a hope they don't. Learning. If they see a raccoon, they don't run over and pet it because it could be rabid. And, and we once, tell you're, them. once you're bitten by a rabid animal, you die. It's a horrible death. There's nothing they can do for you. Right. And, the, and they tell them the character lesson would be the dangers of petting wild animals. Mm -hmm. No matter how cute they might be, they're meant to stay in the wild. And so children learn these things. Yeah, well, the rabies is a serious matter. Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, if you have a cat or dog that hasn't had a rabies shot, there's a huge fine for it. If Absolutely. they scratch or bite someone. Right. And then you're, uh, the, the worst part is they can now sue you. Sure. Because you have to take the rabies shots. If they're given to you immediately, they're, they're rather painful and big deal. Uh, and expensive, $2,500, thank you. And uh, usually, uh, many times, your insurance won't cover them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, they will sue you for uh, a lack of companionship because you cannot uh, have uh, sex with your partner for at least 30 days. Hmm. And if your animal has uh, bitten someone and they have to check the animal for rabies, there's only one way to do it. They kill them. Mm -hmm. right. so, or they hold them in a pen for 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh, and that costs you a bundle. And so by the time you get through being sued and losing your pet or losing it for a while at a huge expense and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, you know, every three years you go over to the clinic, it's free. Have a shot, right. Have a shot. Well, you know, that <coughs> people really need to I mean, to you don't have a shot, your pet needs Right, a shot. absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, and I think that it's important. I think uh -huh. it's important to teach. Can I talk a little bit about my students? Well, your two minutes is already up, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. One of the things I'm only I, kidding. You understand One of the that. things I do uh -huh. is I work with children yeah. a, a lot. I read to them uh, freely. I've had uh, principals say to me, well, how much do you charge? I don't charge. I read to children freely. I share my books with them freely. 
but I want them to write and I want them to read. So one of the things that I did last year, I worked with a group of second graders at uh, School 3 in <laughs> Dunkirk. And each of these little children, we worked every day for, uh, every Tuesday for six weeks, they each wrote their very own story. Oh, really? Based on what they were doing. And we put them together and they named them the Hopes and Dreams and the Hopes, Dreams, and Adventures of the Ringler Riders. Mm -hmm. Ringler is Nancy Ringler. She was their teacher and she is just unbelievable. But at any rate, it really got them inspired to write. Uh -huh. So this year, when Jamestown Community College asked me if I would please uh, teach in their after school program, we did that with the uh, pint size authors. This was written by a second grader. Stop bullying what? Stop bullying Ben. Oh, okay. A second grader. Bullying is a big thing in schools today. And well, I remember. I was bullied all the time. <laughs> well, you know, it's really tough. So <laughs> she wrote this story. All of her, you know, they wrote their own story. Uh, we used a little machine. They put them together. They typed them uh -huh. on laptops. But what I think is interesting about her is that she says, and she wrote under a pen name, oh, really? second grade. Why, uh, why under pen? Oh, she like that's a cute name, Lucy Rose. Lucy Rose, ah. and she said, I under She said, Mrs. Wessling, sometimes authors don't use their own name. Yeah. What is that called? And I said, Well, that's a pen name. She said, I would like to use a pen name. So she chose. She said, I I chose the name of Lucy Rose because I felt that mixing two first names together was creative. Those are her words. And in it, she says, in my story, Stop Bullying Ben, I've tried to explain why it's bad to bully. But you should already know that. You should never bully anyone anywhere at school, in the mall, or in restaurants. Yeah, bullies have a way of turning on you, too. You yeah. know, uh, one of the things I, I learned was how to fight street fight mm -hmm. uh, very early on because of the bullying. And part of street fighting uh, that I, I took up was biting. Yeah. And now you get somebody down, you give them a good bite in the neck, man. This <laughs> sure, sure well, is a bullying. He's unfortunately, not though, anymore. Reed, when you were a child, they bullied with their fists. Yeah. And now they bully with guns. Yeah, I know. And so that's dangerous. Uh, well, you got to pack, pack iron that's, uh, when you go to school. No, that's, no, the only, no. that's the only way to stop this. <laughs> yeah, right. The, a third grader. Uh -huh. Third grader. <clears throat> they chose their own illustrations. They did their own thing. Uh -huh. She wrote... Uh, the story again about stop bullying my sister, uh -huh. Adina Williams. She is just awesome. She was in Mrs. Ringler's class. But this is from a fourth grader. This little boy wrote this book, mm -hmm. uh, The Casino in, in Las Vegas. But what was important about this book was that he said what he said on the back. On the back of each book, they had to write about the author and he about himself. You want to show that? And he said that what was important to him was that he wanted kids to know him as a child who could read and write, okay. not just a child. He doesn't use a pen name, though. He did not use a pen name. Okay. And good. then we had a fifth grader who wrote a chapter book. So these were children that were involved in reading and writing, and they were involved because somebody cared enough to say, do you want to write a book? What do you like to read? And that's what they did. And that's what we're going to do with our... Uh, kids love to write? Kids oh, love to write. And incidentally, they like to illustrate, too. And they love to illustrate. Uh -huh. I, I taught at the uh, uh -huh. uh, college, JCC's Kids College last summer. And we had one little boy who did not like to write but could illustrate beautifully. So they have these talents, and we need to bridge that gap. We need to bring them back and get them involved. Well, I taught um, sixth grade at one point, and part of the curriculum was the Middle Ages. Mm. And... Uh, as a so we would do a whole program and each kid would write a book and as an illuminated manuscript and they loved to do that and they would illuminate them beautifully with colors and everything the first letter was always a beautiful mm -hmm. picture and everything and they would then bind them you can bind books beautifully if you know how with cardboard right. or any kind of lovely cloth and whatever and they were so proud of them absolutely now these are kids who are almost adults you know they're going into high as junior high and they still cherish those books. Even today they tell me they cherish that book. <laughs> well, our li the librarian at School 3 has uh -huh. all, I had 18 students, all 18 students have their books in their library. Other kids can check them out. How awesome is that? It's How just fantastic. Awesome is that? And uh, again, this is a way to uh, emphasize moral character. I mean, they're, they're each, yes. each kids have, they, I notice, 
uh, they made sure that the kids basically wrote about something that's troublesome in the school.